What's going on guys? My name is ADC Art Attack and welcome to today's video. In today's video I'm going to be giving you a live tutorial, hi there, showing you how I draw Vegeta's hands or just Dragon Ball hands in general. This is going to be a sort of hand tutorial thing showing off a couple of Vegeta's um, signature sort of poses and this one, the first one I'm going to be doing is the most difficult one by a long shot and that's the Gallic Gun. I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. Now I've got to make this tutorial somewhat short. I can't have it going crazy long so I have to rush and draw it the way that I would usually draw these drawings. So you're going to get to see how I draw in a sort of tutorial style. So this is going to be uh, heavily broken down. This is going to be sort of my way of drawing showcased for you guys as I draw. If that makes any sense. I'm going to speak you through what I do as I do them. So as of all my drawings, I start with a circle. It doesn't matter what I'm drawing. Even if I'm drawing a square, I start with a circle. It doesn't matter. I always draw with a circle first. And I'm just going to make for Vegeta's Gallic Gun just this sort of lines, these three sort of lines right in here. And they'll come into play as we start doing this, but I think that they're okay. We can have these three lines here, and then I start to map off sort of where I think everything else can go. So I'm going to make a little sort of few markings in here, filling out some gaps. You don't have to be neat with this, by the way. I'm never neat with my rough copies, uh, my rough drafts anyway. I only uh, refine details when the inking stage comes around. For now, we just want to get these lines in and sort of start guessing where things should go. This is sort of like the play around stage. This is the area where I just get to mess around. If I think something goes there, then I put it down. It doesn't matter what it is, I start to put it down. So I'm going to guess where this farm is going to be now. I know I've got a general idea now because I know all of this area. And I know that the farm is going to be slightly inside this line here. So I can do something like this and just map off that I think it's going to be somewhere in this area here. Now I'm not going to refine any details just yet. I'm just going to make the rough little lines where I believe things to be. I come up over here and I start to sort of figure out where I think the overall distance of this, um, the hands should go. The sort of spacing they fit in. So there's pretty much going to follow the rim of this circle to an extent. So the edge of this circle is sort of where my fingers are going to go. Uh, now, yeah, it's just a matter of measuring now and sort of figuring out amongst all the other things that I've done where each finger goes. So the way we're going to do this is, I'm just going to slightly come out first here and just do the finger that is closest just to get everything going. So we'll just do this and I know that there's only a small gap between these two. Then I figure out how wide does it need to go. Does it need to go as wide as the thumb or not? It goes a little bit outside the thumb so somewhere there is where that one's going to be. Then all I'll do is I'll come to the inside part and I start moving it around and start adding on these fingers now. So be aware of where each finger goes. Be aware of how high they go. So now my next step before I start is I look at where the joint is and where things match. So it should match around here. It will come in a little bit. Don't want to go right away to the circle just yet because that's reserved for the next finger, which is the biggest one, the middle finger. So the middle finger is going to come out right the way. So can we do it? We're just going to go right the way out to the edge of the circle. Once we get there, we should start to meet up just above this line over here. So just above this little curve line that we did, that's where the finger should go. So we pretty much worked out perfectly right here. Now I hope you guys can still see it. I hope the tutorial is not too far away. Let's have a little zoomy zoomy. That doesn't look too bad. That looks all right. Okay, so yeah, we need to bring this in now. So again, be aware of where things go, how high things need to be. Come up to this point. Now where is this finger going to be? This one's a little bit below that line. The smallest amount below it, but every little detail should be taken note. It doesn't matter if it's just a slight amount or not. You should be aware of every single detail. And this one is going to come up. Now this one isn't going to go as high as the circle. Um, yeah, it hasn't going to go as far out to the circle as the previous finger. So there you go. Let's figure out how wide we need this um, hand now. So it's not as... It doesn't need to go up too high beyond this point over here. So let's figure out a little line maybe here. Yeah, a little bit above this point just there. We'll come in here and then we can figure out that the top of the hand is basically around here. Now the top of the hand is somewhat covered by the other hand. So all we do now is a sort of rough line over here. There's nothing fancy about that just yet. So we've got a sort of general gist of the hand right now. We know that that's where this hand is. We can add in a few lines here for the finger and then another line over here for this one. And there you go. So there's a basic uh, sort of Gallic gun one hand anyway. Let's start with the next one I guess in a moment. Let me just finish this little bit. There you go. And I might just add on this bit for the appearances sake. So this bit will just come down there like that. Over here, same thing. It will come off in this direction. But I don't know exactly 
how wide I should go just yet. So I'm going to do the other hand and then I'll figure that bit out. So the other hand, the finger is going to go, let's figure out where the thumb is going to go first here actually. So it's somewhat in line with this line here. So the thumb will come in there, comes out. How high do I want it to go? Try and be respectable. Try to keep it about the same size as this little finger just here. It is a little bit in line with it and the thumb and the little finger are quite relative to each other. They're not far off each other's size. So we can keep those two together like that. Make sure we don't get too much distance there. How wide do we need to go? Not too far. Something around here maybe looks good. And then we can bring it back in like that. We'll come up there. We do the same thing. We're just going to start figuring out the rest of this. So it sort of follows the rest of the hand. It comes off. And again, now I'm just going to figure out where the outside of the finger should go. So it should be somewhere along this line. Just there is the back of the hand. Uh, the back of the finger, sorry. We're going to bring it around and come back inside and go along this point just in there. Bring it in. Bring it in. And in there. So this bit could probably drop down a little bit. And again, we can mess around with this when we need to ink anyway. So I'm not going to play around with it too much. Come here. And then start to figure out. So at this point, it's pretty much just a visual game. It's now just a part of where do each finger map up with the other ones? Where do they line up with each individual finger? Um, you should 100% get yourself a reference for doing this. There's no reason at all that you should ever be doing this freestyle because you have an established character you're working with. There is no absolute reason why you should be freestyling something like this. If you're creating a character, fair dues, freestyle as much as you'd like, but when you're creating a specific character design or a specific um, technique, you should 100% be using a reference. Do not try to freestyle it because you will make minor errors that will impact the overall drawing. So definitely get yourself a reference to follow and that's exactly what I've done here so now I'm just figuring out where I believe the rest of this to be in relative to stuff and it's a guessing game I'm sort of guessing at this point where it should go and when I think it looks good I'll keep it or when I come to the inking stage I will mess around with it and change things so at that point we pretty much have ourselves a Gallic Gun Vegeta. There it is. So I'm going to move on to the next drawing now. I think is a good time to do so. What shall we do next, guys? I'm thinking we should do a fist. Because I like to draw Vegeta's fists for some reason. It's like the only thing that I'm really good at drawing. So yeah, we're going to draw a fist. So this is the way I draw the fist. What I always do is I start with doing a sort of cube area. And I sort of bring it down to a point over here. Then go straight over here. And we do something kind of like this and it gives me a good platform and basis to work with so i can start to guess again every time i draw it's a guessing game every time i draw i'm guessing what i'm doing so whether i'm going to do this what i'll do is i'll start to figure out where each finger should go and figure out a nice distance and a nice size relative to what you've got on the sides over here so what i'm going to do is fill out a knuckle just in this point there and i'll come up here and i think that this area looks pretty good for one finger so we do a finger in here we never forget to do our little lines as well they'll help us out and you can also follow these lines along when you're doing the rest of the drawing the second finger all of these fingers are pretty much identical there are a slight few differences in the um angle of them in terms of the width though they're pretty much identical so i will be going a little bit outside of this square because i went a bit big with this one but that's okay that's what we do rough guidelines for. So I do this rough, rough, rough finger fist type thing to start with all the time. Start with a very rough one, a very, 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 a very rough one, and then we sort of build upon it after. So right now, this is a sort of rough hand that we want to get. We'll go up here and we'll just do the thumb just comes off the sort of knuckle bit, just where this part joins up here. We get our thumb and then it comes back in. And does the same thing over here. It starts to follow the structure of the fingers. Curve it inwards. And there you go. So what we'll do now is we'll bring this across here. Start adding some of these sort of things that go on with the glove. But don't worry too much about those just yet. So now that we've got our very rough base. We can start to build upon it and give ourselves uh, more of a hand. So I'll start by doing the knuckles because they're definitely the key areas in this drawing. 
And what I'll do is this part can sort of come over a little bit and we always add these little lines indentations just along the they sort of help us to measure things and make things look a little bit better i'm gonna bring that in same thing over here we'll bring this one up like that and come across there like that now when we add this knuckle bear in mind that the knuckles always come straight down they come straight away down and then they start to go in at around just below these points so somewhere around there is where we'll get our next knuckle in and you can bring these in to about the same distance as the lower part here sort of in line there it all flows in line and there's another one of the knuckles but the same thing over here this one will come very low same thing it will come inwards somewhere around there and then finally with this one we do the same thing it comes down now with this one at the bottom be sure to keep the knuckle coming in like this the knuckle will always come inside and then you end up with the lines that sort of flow around it Unlike these ones where the knuckles all join up with the rest of it, this one comes back in because of the position and the angle of it. So keep that in mind when you do this. Now, <clears throat> we can add in some minor details now just to fill out the knuckles. But for all intents and purposes, this is pretty much done actually. I did a pretty good uh, rough there, so that sort of worked out. But again, that's a very, very, very easy hand to do once you understand just the basics and foundations. And make sure that you always get a rough sketch done. A lot of people like to do it right first time. Never worry about doing it right first time. Just get yourself a base sketch done and then build upon it from then. And I'm just going to fill out a few details. I like to add a little bit of a sort of like bumps and things to the hand. Just to give it a bit more realism to it. So you sort of like go outwards with it. Pretend there's like little curved things happening. I don't know. Goes out there. A few lines in here. I don't know. Just add things in like this. That sort of give it a bit more texture. And give the overall look of it a more realistic feel. There you go. That will go in there like that. There you go. Now we have one of the fists. So I guess we should just move on to the next drawing. So we're moving on. Now I'm not, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here to be honest. I'm considering doing an open hand. But an open hand is a very big part. So this might take a while. Hmm. Should we give it a go? Am I still recording? That will be something to check. I am still recording. All right, I guess we're going to do an open hand. So an open hand. Now, this is a very big one to do. And this is something I'm probably not going to get right first time. But we'll give it a go and we'll see what we can do. So first things first, I want to start with a circle. Now, a circle is always a thing that I start with, as I've just explained. For some reason, I didn't start with a circle with that. But usually I would if it wasn't as big as this. But there you go. I didn't start with a circle. Um, so all I'm going to do now is just figure out the edges. So the edge over here is going to have a thumb that comes out over there. Now the thumb comes out not too high above this circle. Now I don't need to figure out exactly any distances or any heights or anything like that. I just want to sort of figure out where each finger is going to go. So I know that there's a finger just somewhere off the center line here that will go up in that direction. There's another one sort of in line with the thumb that will go off in this direction. So that goes off somewhere over there. There's another one that comes a little bit below the thumb down here like that. And also the joint starts just below the thumb over here. So that will go off in a sort of flare direction over here. And then finally this one, just imagine these two points come around like so. And then the base of the hand sort of maps off here. So this is going to be a fun one to do. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this done because I haven't prepared this or planned for this one. So let's see how this one actually goes. This could be hilariously bad. Oh boy. Okay, so... Why is my paper all bent? Let's fix that up. There you go, guys. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this finger up here because I think it's the most dominant one that's going to give us a sort of positioning. So what I'm going to do is just figure out a little sausage type look to it. And as we've already got these rough guys that we know, I could just do this sort of like rough sausagey line like that. Then over here, I can do the same thing. I need to figure out how high and low it needs to go. So I need to just figure out that these points are curving around each other. And it's sort of distance that's similar to that. It needs to sort of go around like that. So what I'm going to do here is just give this the same thing. The same little sausage finger, just like that. Same thing over here. We're going to do a little sausage finger. Now, I need to figure out the distance, but it's okay because we need it about the same size as these fingers. So it's not a problem. Do it like that and something like that over here same thing we're going to come down and do that like that now we're starting to build upon it it's starting to look a bit more like a hand this one over here the thumb is the wrong way around we need the thumb to come this way so what we're going to do here is start to fill out a little bit of gaps and details here just to really help us along the way so do these lines there like that 
I'm going to bring this bit of the farm inwards. Now, I need to be careful not to go crazy with this bit. So, I want to add in the center line just along here to somewhat assist me uh, in doing the rest of this. Now, I need to be aware as well how far out does this line go. So, it's somewhere around here. So, I'm going to bring it down to like there and we'll see what happens as we go. Same with this one over here. This one starts to curve around and I need to imagine where it's going to be. So, it sort of comes around like this. How low does it go? Somewhere like there. So we do something like this over here. Now let's start to fill out details. Okay, then here's the fun bit. So then with this fun, all I'm going to do is follow the general gist of what we've got doing the little curve like that. Same thing over here. We're going to bring it down and go around like that. The thickness is okay. We don't need to worry too much about that. And with this bit, we need to make sure that we get this thumb face in the right way. So we need to come out with a bit of a knuckle showing a very small amount of a point just there. And when we come up to this up here, we start to flatten off the top. And then we bring it round on a bigger curve along this side like that. We come down to this bit and we start to drop it inwards where all of these joints go. Along here, they come along there. And I'm just going to fill out these little bits of gaps just for appearances sake. So we'll just do something that goes like that. And there you go. So there's one thumb. Moving on to the second finger now, we can start doing some of this. We'll figure out how low it needs to go. So it's somewhat in line with this line here. So at this point, we can add in one of the bumps. Now, how high do you need to go with them? Be sensible. Something like that is a good line to follow. We'll do the same thing, we're going to come up. Now, this one will be a little bit smaller than the other one, than this gap. So, this one's just a little bit tinier following that route there. And then up here, we do the same thing as we did with the thumb. We sort of make a little bump. So, I'm just going to come back up over here. And once we get there, we go around something like that. So, we sort of got our finger. And in fact, I want to flatten this bit off up here. I don't want that one being too big. So something like that isn't looking too bad. Over here, let's bring this. Now we add a bit of three dimension to this bit. So we'll just add a bit of the backhand behind there. And a bit of this comes down. We do a little bump just in here. One bump that will come up. How far do we need to go with this? Somewhere around there is a good distance relative to the other finger. This one. Now remember that these are bents, these are little joints, so you don't have to follow a straight line. You can sort of start to bounce upwards with them and do a few things with them. Uh, with the little curve here, little curve here, little curve here. As we come here, remember that we are on the underneath of the hand. So with the underneath of the hand, it needs to have a dip to it. It needs to come down and dip like this. Same thing up here and dip. Now, I didn't go far enough with this thing just there. But for now, we're going to leave it like that because it's not looking terrible. But we will need to change this uh, tip of the finger. And that's things we can do when we ink it. That's not too bad. Coming down here. Now, this thing didn't start as high as that. So, I sort of made a mistake there. But that's okay. We'll correct that. All we do is we drop it down a little bit. And we do the same thing. How far do we need to go in relative respectiveness to that? So, somewhere around there. And then over here. And again, it follows the same design as that one. So all we do, curve down the bottom, add our little lines in here. Same thing, little line in here. And then this one over here. Now, if any of these fingers is a bit too thick, like for example, this one is, it's okay. We'll just scale it back just a little bit. So that finger will get scaled back to there. And obviously that will be... A little bit easier to see once I ink it. So we'll just do that. Bring this one across. And then the same thing with the final finger. All I'm doing here is just again playing it relative to the previous one. So we just do that. This part comes in line with this part down there. And there you go. We've got a very good base for a hand. So it's actually pretty good for a first attempt. Not too bad, huh? And then, yeah, you just fill out the lines down here. I'm actually quite happy with that. It didn't come out too bad. When I ink it, I can correct any mistakes and make it look a little bit better. 
But for all intents and purposes, I'd say that's pretty good. And we've got ourselves a great foundation to build upon and continue our drawing with Vegeta. So guys, uh, if you enjoyed this video, um, then awesome. Thank you so much. Let me know. And I'll be sure to probably make more of these tutorials in the future. I know I've been very slow with tutorials and stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know what else to say really. I guess I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. And yeah, take care guys. See you around.